The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. So for the last several weeks, we have celebrated Jesus' birth. We've remembered the arrival of the Magi and the presentation of the gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And in all of these stories, Jesus was a baby or a young child. He had no speaking lines whatsoever. In fact, in Matthew's Gospel, it takes until the third chapter before Jesus speaks a single word. And he does that in today's Gospel reading as he presents himself to John the Baptist so that John can baptize him. In Matthew's telling of the story, John thinks that this is backwards and that Jesus should baptize him. So, Jesus responds with the very first words that Matthew records him as saying. He tells John, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And with these words, we are introduced to two themes which will continue to echo throughout Matthew's Gospel. The first theme is that Jesus says stuff and people have no idea what he means. I mean, what does it mean that it is proper in this way to fulfill all righteousness? Biblical scholars for two millennia have debated the meaning of these words. Even John the Baptist doesn't seem to know. He doesn't go, oh, yeah, you're right, now I got it. He just sort of goes, uh, yeah, okay, whatever, uh, okay, I'll take your word for it. And then it says he consented and did it, but he's not sure why, what these words mean. So that's the first important thing. The second theme is the theme of righteousness. While it's a standard religious term in the Bible, in different places that term righteousness can mean different things. But the theme of righteousness comes up over and over again in Matthew's Gospel, often in opposition to ideas of human self-righteousness. So what does Matthew understand Jesus to mean by righteousness? And how is that righteousness connected to Jesus' baptism? Well, as we read the rest of Matthew, we at least get a clearer understanding of what righteousness means in the rest of the Gospel, and then maybe this righteousness of Jesus' baptism begins to make a little more sense. That's because as we continue to read Matthew, it becomes clear that righteousness in Matthew's Gospel is about understanding your relationship with God to be about God's claim on you, not your claim on God. And we see this in Jesus' baptism. The voice from heaven says, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. But at this point, Jesus hasn't done anything yet. He has not resisted the temptations of the devil, which come next. He has not preached good news to anybody. He hasn't healed the sick raised the dead, or performed any other miracle. If the voice from God happened after any one of those things, we might think that God's love and acceptance and God's generally being pleased with Jesus happened because Jesus did some really good thing. But God's acceptance of Jesus came first, before all the rest. And it was Jesus' understanding of his acceptance of God that allowed him to go and do all of these things. Jesus' righteous living was first and foremost about living in this right understanding of his relationship with God, that it was about God's claim and call, not about how special people thought he was. And so the other part of righteousness in Matthew is understanding that righteousness is never about showing off. One of the things about Jesus' baptism in Matthew's gospel is that it seems like nobody notices. John the Baptist apparently knows who Jesus is, 
but he does not announce him to the crowd. He doesn't go, look, here's Jesus. He's the Messiah. He says nothing to nobody. And it is possible, indeed likely, that only Jesus sees the heavens opening and hears the voice. Matthew says the heavens were opened to him, not to anybody else. And this is also clear because unlike in some of the other Gospels, nobody follows Jesus after this. He walks off alone into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And while he's there, he again demonstrates that righteousness is not to be found in showing off and doing all the tricks that the devil wants him to do. And righteousness in Matthew's Gospel is also about being in community and solidarity with others. John the Baptist resists baptizing Jesus because he is essentially saying, dude, you tested out of this class. You don't have to do this. Why are you taking this class when you've tested out? But Jesus, he doesn't take shortcuts. He doesn't test out of the experiences of the people he came to save. He doesn't test out of baptism, but he also doesn't test out of all the rest of human stress and anxiety that people face, including even death. And in so doing, Jesus shows that righteousness is not found in being aloof from others, but in standing with them and enduring what they endure. And so it strikes me that, at least in part, the reason Jesus' baptism by John is necessary to fulfill righteousness is that it's one way Jesus demonstrates the kind of righteousness he calls us to in our baptism. And that's because for us, too, the righteousness of baptism to which we're called is about understanding our relationship with God to be based on God's claim on us and not the other way around. We get to be called children of God because God has made a decision for us. And that love and acceptance of God is apart from anything we do or don't do. We can live securely in that love and acceptance, and indeed, it's in the security of that love and acceptance that God hopes we will be inspired to love and accept others, to resist the temptation of evil in our lives, and to invite others into God's love and acceptance. That's what living in a right relationship with God is supposed to be about. It's the way Jesus lived, and it's the way Jesus calls us to live as well. For us, too, the righteousness of baptism that we're called to is always going to be about not showing off. Later on in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus will go on to say things like, when you give, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray in secret. The idea is not to be ashamed of your relationship with God, but rather to be about doing what God is calling you to do instead of trying to look for praise and acclamation from other people. So often, human ideas of self-righteousness are about trying to look good, or at least receive praise from other people. Oh, you did such a great thing. That's so wonderful that you did that. But when we do that, we're really looking for human acclamation. We're not looking to just pick up and do the things God wants us to do that very often nobody's going to notice. Jesus shows us that real righteousness is about doing good and not caring whether anybody else notices. That's the kind of righteousness that Jesus calls us to in our baptisms as well. And for us, too, the righteousness of baptism that we're called to is about being in community and solidarity with others. In Jesus' baptism, Jesus refused to stand apart or even to be differentiated from people who are not as good as him, which, let's face it, is everybody. And throughout his ministry, Jesus called his disciples to live in the same way. Unfortunately, often I find that for many Christians, righteousness is about condescendingly being willing to sort of, you know, fellowship with sinners because maybe some of your goodness and holiness will rub off on them and it will help. But that's self-righteousness, and it's really just about feeling good about yourself. In Jesus' baptism, he stood with others because they needed him, even when it made him look bad, and even when it caused him personal pain. And that is the kind of baptismal righteousness Jesus calls us to live as well. 
Today's gospel reading is the one and only story about Jesus' baptism, but it's just the beginning about, of hearing about this idea of righteousness. So as we continue to read through Matthew's gospel in the coming year, whenever you hear that word righteousness, remember that it is never about being self-righteous or being aloof. Instead, the kind of righteousness to which Jesus calls us is always about living each day in a right relationship with God, a relationship based on God's love and call in our lives, not on our merit. The kind of righteousness to which Jesus calls us is always about faithfully doing what God calls us to do in our daily lives, regardless of whether anybody else notices or praises us. And righteousness, the kind of righteousness that Jesus calls us to, is always based on standing with others who need us so that God can work in us and through us to make a difference in the life of the world around.